Hi, in this tutorial, we will solve some exercises that will help us to identify the highest normal form up to BCNF. So, again, in this chapter, we're working with normalization of tables. So, we want our tables to be BCNF, and again, that is not always possible when the decomposition that can be in BCNF is not dependency preserving, as is discussed in the PowerPoint for this class then uh, we can always find BCNF decomposition that are lossless joint but not we cannot guarantee that they are dependency preserving however we can always find the compositions that are lossless joint dependency preserving for 3NF so that's what we say then we, we do 3NF if BCNF is not possible but we always hope for BCNF now 2NF and 1NF are not acceptable, 3NF, it is acceptable if we don't have another choice. Okay, so now, in this example, and again, this theory is based on the assumption that we know functional dependencies for a table. So in this example, we got a set of functional dependencies. We got two functional dependencies that are applied for table R, that is A, B, and C. So the main question here is, what is the highest normal form that this table is? That 1F, 2NF, 3NF, or PCNF? So we can see this like a kind of a multiple choice question because it has four possible answers. 1, 2, 3, or PCNF. Um, I have here A, B, C, and D to have like a procedure. For example, let's compute the A plus B plus C plus Y because that kind of helps us to find the candidate keys because we want that and that's what we're doing B, C, B, and C so we can review. But the main question is D. So, let's see. The first part, to do the A plus, the closure, remember we do A plus equals A, that's the initial value. And then we're going to check each functional dependency, A derives B, that we add the B. And then anything that can be derived from A and B, there is nothing else, so that's it. Now B plus starts with the B, whatever is the element here. And then we look in the set of functional dependencies, if something else derives, derives, um, can be derived from B, nothing else. C plus, we start with C, that's the initial value. Then we go to the set F. Then we see that C implies B. Then we add the B. Then we check for something else from C and B, nothing else. So we can see that um, A and C are kind of close to be the candidate key, right? Here in A, the only thing that is missing is C. Here in C, the only thing that is missing is the A. So that means if A, I add the B, I mean the C, then I get this, C, C, I get this, I got that. Or, or, or we can even see here without drawing the dependency graph. You see that A is not not derived. That means A has no incoming, C has no incoming, Y, B, and this B is only incoming. So B cannot be part of the candidate key. A and C should be part of the candidate key. And then we see, well, A and C is the only candidate key. From that, we need to find prime attributes because remember that is needed for the identification either 3NF or uh, 2NF. Why the candidate key is needed? Because once we know the candidate key, we know the super keys. Super keys will be then the question C. Is AC with something else? So it's AC or AC with the B. Okay, so once we got that information, now we can answer D. Is, is this table in BCNF? How do we know? Well, we go with the functional dependencies and we look at the left-hand side. So left-hand side has an A. If A is a super key and C is a super key, then yes, this table is BCNF. So let's check. Is A by itself and C by itself? No, we know from here, right? A by itself is not even a key. C by itself is not a key. The super keys are this. It has to be an A and a C and an A and a C. Then we know now it's not BCNF. And then that's what I have here, D. Is that BCNF? No, because A is not a super key in this. Now, we check. You see if this is, um, if this is 3NF. For that, now we check the right hand side of the ones that the left hand side was in a super key which is this case is b prime no then this is my next thing three no because b is not prime 
So remember, if this passed the test that A is a super key, then we check the other one and check if that's the case. Remember, we need to check every functional dependency. So VCNF no, 3NF no. Then we check now to see if non-prime attributes are fully dependent of every candidate key. So then the non-prime attribute is B. That means AC needs to be derived from B and is not fully dependent on the key AC, for example, because we don't need the C, we can only add A to B. So since B, since it wasn't BCNF, it wasn't 3NF, and it wasn't 2NF, then R is 1NF. So it's not a good table. Then we need to do something about it, and that's what we're going to do in another tutorial to normalize the table. So let's see, I have another set of exercises here, and I think I want to explain the first two exercises. And I'm posting the solution for the third one, and I want you to post the solutions to the discussion session. So the first exercise is similar, it's the same, the same identical questions that I'm asking A, B, C, D, but the main thing that I really care is D, what is the highest normal form. So question number one, I have one, two, three, four functional dependencies on R. And then what I really want to know is what is the highest normal form. However, I'm asking you A, B, and C because this will help us to actually answer D. And we can also practice those. So let's go with question number one. So this is what we have. So then I'm putting here A, B, C, D. We get the closure. Initial value for this will be A. Initial value for this is B. Initial value for C plus is C. Initial value for D plus is D. And then we look if something else is derived from A in the set. Yes, from now you can get B, and we add the B. Is something else that can be derived from A and B? Nothing else, so the A plus is B, A, B. Now B plus is B, is anything that can be derived with just B? No. Then C plus, we start with C, something that can be derived with C, we see that C derives A and D. So after the C, I add in A and D. Now I check, is something that I can get with C, A, and D? We see A on D, D I can get B, and then adding the B, and then I'm adding everything, then C is actually a candidate key, right? A is no candidate, B is no candidate, D, we do the same thing, something that can derive from D, the B, and that's it. So the answer, what is, who is candidate C? Remember that you can inspect and check, but we can see that then the D by itself with the B cannot, uh, be derived, so actually nothing derived C, right? You can see here, from, if we draw the dependency graph, nothing derived C, and C by itself is candidate, and C is the only candidate key. Now, what is the list of all super keys? Well, anything that contains C, C by itself, and look at all the possible combinations that contain C. So actually, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possible candidate keys. Now we're ready to answer the question. Is R BCNF? Well, we check every functional dependency again. We check for the uh, left hand side. Is A super key? Then we know that all super keys need to contain C. So this is a no. So it's not BCNF. Right? For example, here BC, this is a super key. C is a super key. This is not a super key. But they all need to be super key. The next thing that we need to check is about prime and non-prime. So prime are all elements, all the attributes that are part of a candidate key C. Non-prime is A, B, and D. So for example, here we check the right-hand side of the first is a B, and B is non-prime. So it won't be 3 and F, and that's what I have here. Is that B, C, and F? No. Is that 3 and F? No. And this is the reason. Now, is 2 and F. C, in this case, is... Uh, the primary key and is just one attribute, then every non prime is going to be fully dependent. Why? Because I cannot take away an attribute from there. What was the difference with the previous example? In the previous example that we did in the other tutorial, I think, for example, here C, the candidate keys here B is A and C. So, for example, when, when we say that it's not fully dependent, is I can take away one of the attributes and then still derive the non prime. That's the case when I have more than one attribute together. But when the candidate key is just one single attribute, there is nothing else that I can take away. Because then there is nothing. So, yeah, they are fully dependent. 
y ahora tú es a fully dependent on C, then yes, this table is 2 and F. So the answer is R is in 2 and F, which means it's not a good table, and we're going to try to propose a decomposition to have it as a, a possible set of tables that are BCNF. Now let's go with just one more example and then we will stop here. So this is the second example which we had one, two, three, four functional dependencies on this table, which is R. Now we're following the same procedure. Now here the handwriting is changing because a student was helping me to derive the, 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 the uh, solutions. So the A plus, we initial value is A, and then we look and see what is derived from A. So A, D, so that's what the second element is D. And then something with A and D. A and D gets B, so the third element is B. Now anything that gets A, D, or B. So here B also derives C, so C. So A is a super key, right? Now we do the same with B. B by itself derives C, so that's what we got B, C. And then B, C derives A, and we know A derives everything. Now C, we got with C, anything that the C by cell derives, nothing else. The same with D, nothing else. Now from here we can tell that A and B are prime. So two, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, two candidate keys. And also A and B are prime because they are members of a, of a candidate keys. Then C and D by cells are not candidate. And if we combine C and D, uh, there is nothing here that C and D derives. So we don't get anything. So the only candidate keys are A and B. Now, what are the possible super keys? Anything that contains A or any combination that contains B, we're listing those here. We got all the non primes. When we got all that information, it's really easy to, um, to solve the last question. What is the highest normal form? So A and B, anything that contains N and B is super key. So we go with the set again, BC. Is BC a uh, super key? Yes, because it contains B. So this passed the test. We go with the next one. Is this I of the second dependency uh, super key? Yes. Then so far so good. Remember, they all need to be yeses. A and D, yes, it's a super key. It has A. This is a super key. Yes, 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 yes. Then R is in BC now. Perfect. So the answer is in F because all left hand sides of FDs are super keys. Okay, thank you.